framework actually uses ADO.NET for uh, data access and connectivity and supports LinQ as the language. So you, you write SQL, no? So SQL is a language. SQL is a structured query language, no? Here in entity framework, again, see it connects to database and all it, it does it, it internally uh, without like without we writing ADO.NET, but it uses ADO.NET to connect to database, everything and that it is inbuilt. So instead of SQL, we are writing link you to read, write. No, uh, that's what we saw to read, write back to a data source. So um, in, uh, if you see, uh, so basically, uh, we do not write any stored procedures uh, uh, basically in entity framework. Okay, uh, as it said, entity framework uses database, but we do not write uh, database entities to connect. So basically, entity framework means uh, it's code first approach. Okay, so uh, you do not, you don't need to go to the database at all. You being not going to a database at all, and you are writing everything in a code. That is called entity framework. Writing something in database, connecting from code, uh, I would rather say that is ADO.NET. You, if we want to do that, we better need to go for ADO.NET. Entity framework is not the right purpose to do that, basically. But there are ways that you can do. Uh, like maybe you can call in a. Um, so. So in maybe when we build a data-driven uh, software application, you may want to call an uh, existing show procedure uh, in entity framework. Okay, so those things we'll uh, do. Okay. Um, so what you have to do is uh, you can have the show procedure also. You can get it imported here. Else. Uh, one second, I'm just I'm checking for any stroke procedure. There is no possibility. Basically, how you have to do is uh... okay. mm -hmm. let me write a sample. What we have to do is we have to create a uh, uh, What is our DB context? So actually, you are going to actually write. Uh, um, Radio.net. So, So uh, basically the same way that you write in an uh, ADO.NET, first you write, create the connection. So here the connection is the context. So there you basically write the connection string like the uh, connect with your database. So next, basically again, what you have to do in this, you have to take the context and you have to connect with the connection string. So, uh, 
basically same what we do context dot Right once again, once again, I'm not able to get the connection. See. Command execute a uh, uh, my scope of the uh, name. Let's say um, this my HP name means I uh, have to create the list. So this list I have to create. So list will be is equal to my db context okay db context dot okay db context dot uh, the list that i created for this two pro okay okay uh, one second i will just uh, write it completely hmm. what all list we have so you some master itself that from sql raw okay i have to put here is the master sql dot to list getter Ah, right. So, so that's it. That's it. Mm. Ah, okay. So this is the best way, actually. Okay. Okay. See, uh, very simple. See, first. So when you are uh, going to connect with an uh, SQL uh, store procedure, so whatever the store procedure is returning, that you should create an that you should create an model basically see let's say i have added a series of model but yeah let's say you have a stop proc you have a stop proc and that stop proc returns in a set of 20 columns means that 20 columns you should create an model okay first that 20 product you should create a model and for that 20 columns that is the 20 columns you are going to receive it no so for that 20 columns uh, basically what you have to going to do is like you are going to 
execute the uh, this is from sql raw see this is the raw sql that you have added into your uh, um, your list also no so how to execute raw sql basically so here what i am doing is basically i am executing this uh, store procedure so this will it, this will go to your database while connecting your database it will just uh, simply uh, uh, hit the database and execute this store okay Okay. So, but you have to create the model. You have to create. Uh, you have to do the add migration for that model, and then only you have to hit it because. Uh, 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 okay, you have to create the model, and yeah, uh, for that model only you can uh, do it. So basically, uh, so in this code, uh, uh, you have to create this list, okay, and. Uh, list of the particular type that uh, your sql is going to return okay create a variable to hold sql statement okay this is what we have done here with the name of stock procedure to call on the database server okay we are using the uh, from sql drop okay so this is on the method uh, on the db set okay uh, collection that we have defined in the db context so this you have to this also you have to define in the uh, uh db context okay okay to, uh, to invoke this two procedure so we to invoke this two procedure you have to uh, define it in the db context first of all okay, okay. and uh, okay mm, this is the uh if you have any question uh this is how you call an uh um, no Okay, it's very simple, uh, straightforward. This is better than writing an ADO connection itself. That is, that will be uh, um, complex, but we can use uh, from SQL. Okay. Okay. So also we can pass the parameter. Ah right? uh, uh, yes. Okay. So basically, how you will pass the parameters? You know, just like yeah, whatever parameters you want. Let's say this takes two parameters means. Uh, in SQL, how will you do that? It takes two integer, n comma ten means plus or no. You can yeah, write okay. the exact statement here. You let uh, if it is like any strings or anything, you can just write the exact statement here. It will it's going to take the string and going to execute in the uh, SQL. Okay. 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 Uh, in for dynamic, we can uh, like uh, concatenate the uh, variable name, oh. right? Yeah, this is string only, no? Okay, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, yes, direct. Yeah. That's all. Okay. This is a string, so you can concatenate. Okay, okay. So that is to procedure. Next, uh, next we are going to see transactions. Uh, wait, I'll see the uh, list once again. Okay, um, transactions in uh, entity framework. Okay, transactions allow several database operation to be processed in an atomic manner. You know that we have uh, tried transactions in SQL. So if the transaction is committed, all the op operation are successfully applied in to the database. If the transaction is loaded for that, none of the operation are applied to the database. Basically, in uh, our uh, in our case, entity framework, uh, what whatever you do, if you only do the uh, context or uh, save changes, it will uh, work. If there is any error here, it will automatically uh, you, you can put a try try catch here so that it will automatically jump to the catch section and go. Okay, it is not like in SQL like you, you, let's say um uh, yeah you are re removing here. Okay, let's say if there is any error while removing in SQL uh, if if you are going to remove ten, ten data if after removing eight data there is an error means eight data is gone. Okay, only the two data will be remaining, right? That's SQL. So that's why we are using transactions. Okay, but if you see uh, in um, entity framework, if there is an error while removing, okay, uh, if that error comes, uh, you, you basically it does mean that you have committed everything. Okay, if there is an error after uh, removing eight uh, rows means the error in the ninth row. If you get the error in the ninth row, it doesn't mean that your all the eight rows are removed. Only if you do the db context for save changes, uh, it means it is removed. Okay. So one second. Okay. 
ஓகே ஸோ தட் இஸ் ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன்ஸ் So by default, if the database provider supports transactions, all changes in a single call to save changes are applied in a transaction. Okay. So if any of the changes fail, basically, if any of the changes fail, the transaction is rolled back. See, say if you, let's say, uh, let's say you are doing the, uh, okay, you are adding it here. Okay. So you are adding it in a loop. So in a for each loop. Okay. after adding uh, like uh, 10 rows the 11th row there is an any error it will it will directly cancel and come comes out no if you put a try you have to put a try catch basically okay so it won't do the db save changes now you understand uh, see save changes itself and uh, it's in a uh, transaction in uh, uh, in your uh, um entity frame but see this is the auto transaction that you have a uh, Uh, given me or what is auto transactions basically that you have to add try catch so that if there is any error it doesn't do the commit so db context dot save changes is the commit that you are doing okay but there is manual transactions also in uh, uh, in our database uh, in our entity framework okay what you can do is you have to it's basically very simple uh, it's like uh, you have to create the begin and end contact uh, transactions okay what you have to do is one second let's say Hmm. Okay, so what you are doing is, so basically what you are you are creating an a variable for your context. Okay, so you are creating a variable for your context. Maybe you can do this also. Okay, you can do this also. This is also not needed actually. You create a variable for your context, and then you do a begin transaction. Before let's say after ch- save changes because this is an. Uh, Uh, um manual uh, transaction you are adding and put the transaction dot commit got it okay so that is the uh, thing and also you can do the roll back got it okay but let me ask you do you think this has any value in your code you are just imposing a roll back and commit but it it will not have any value in your code no let's say yes. i'm I, i need to do this uh, i'm just do, i'm going to do an insert uh, update okay i cannot have roll back in my code see what why we have roll the transactions in our uh, sql because in case when we are doing a production update or production delete production add add means uh, that when you do manually you use this okay so apart from that this is not going to help you in any other way no so but if you want to write it in your code you need to commit it you need to find the solution that if there is an error it doesn't uh, affect anything but you If there is no error, means you you cannot keep on rollbacking every time because this is code you you deploy it in server. Okay, so auto transactions are better in uh, uh, entity framework. Always try to write try catch so that if there is an error, it automatically um, gets it. Okay. Okay. Got it.
So what is next? One second. And taking. One second. I'm taking. Mm. Okay, so we need next one uh, is uh, scope identity. Okay, wait. Scope identity basically, uh, see. Basically, there's only one way you can do this scope identity uh, as of I know because scope identity is a uh, database function. Okay, so it's a it's entirely an SQL function. It is not a database function too. Uh, so it's an SQL function. So in case if you have a table uh, and that table you are doing an insert, the table with uh, let's say um, yeah, see let's say this table. This table has then a uh, identity column. So you have a store generated pattern. That's what we say for an identity column. Store uh, generated uh, option uh, is identity. Okay, database generated option is identity. Means uh, um, when you are uh, so you you can so this should be used to default when generating the model. See, basically we we create the identity column. No. So as I said, no. Uh, before I explained uh, you why scope identity is not uh, in uh, entity framework because uh, because it's first thing is it is actually an uh, uh, I gave you an example. No, like if you say in database, okay. So it's a single server and uh, like many people are trying to connect to that. Uh, um, Many people are trying to connect to the same server, and uh, you want you like let's say when uh, two people are connecting to the same server and doing an insert, you want to get the identity of one one person. Okay, means uh, you can uh, use this scope identity. Okay, but when you are using a code first approach, your code let's say if you are running here means when you do an insert. This will have your identity, and it, there's a there's a copy made for some other person who is using that particular code. No, database database uses a single server, so anyone who uh, connects to that server, so everyone will be into single uh, connection string. Okay, everyone are accessing in the same place. It's like an uh, how to say like um, you have seen this uh, C plus plus uh, heap and all, no stack uh, heap and all. So it will be your database connections will be in that way. So everyone are using the same uh, connections, uh, so they are in st stack and heap. Okay, so when you are doing a ten insert, and when someone is doing an another ten insert, means based on the time, all the twenty inserts are ordered in the stack and heap method. Okay, let's say maybe one, two, three is yours, four, five, six is his insert, seven, eight is yours, nine, ten is his insert. Means everything is confused, no? But when you are doing it from entity, it is not like that. Ten will be uh, for yours next 10 will be his that's all or 10 will be his or next 10 will be yours that's all so when you are doing an insert here let's say let's say i have done an insert here means how to get my uh, maximum uh, id so int id is equal to basically User dot user ID. That's all. This is your uh, uh, this is your. Uh, oh, you have to take it after the save changes. Okay, get it after the save changes. Do it after the save. Ah, uh, sorry, it, it's long. No. Okay. So this will give you your maximum user ID. Okay. You got it? Yes. That's all. So there is no scope identity. Scope underscore identity is a function in a structured query language. So here you do not use structured query language in entity. Okay. Okay. And <clears throat> raw SQL is what that I have given you. 
so where did we do the raw sql okay so this, ah this is the raw sql this is raw sql it, it doesn't mean that you you should only use uh, for store procedure you can write a select statement also here and you can pass the string and it will execute the written statement you should uh, capture it with a model okay you should create that model you can write any uh, statements here select update anything you can do okay but the problem is so this you can uh, this from is from the sql draw depends upon the db context okay so if you are doing an update and all means it should return something okay depends upon a db uh, db set and if you are going to do update and all means um, uh, that's not uh, very useful no maybe you can uh, write the uh, some con uh, conflicting uh, queries uh, directly with the queries to get data okay basically use this from sql raw to get data that's the best thing those that uh, returns data is what you can uh, use it okay okay hmm. <clears throat> Okay, then what else uh, uh, need to see is um, <clears throat> Fluent API is what we are actually doing. Entity Framework Fluent API is basically uh, it's what that we are uh, creating the uh, APIs. Uh, uh, okay, so one second. Wait, I'll show you. Uh, okay, so what is Entity Framework Fluent API is? Uh, uh, we say it as uh, it's used to configure some domain classes to override conventions. Okay, technically. Okay, so uh, basically, it's okay. It's a design pattern in API. Fluent API is a way that you design. See, when I say design pattern means it is the way that you are going to design your API, nothing else. Okay. So fluent uh, <clears throat> API design pattern, or we call it as fluent interface. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so how do we do that basically? Uh, Basically, it is not. Uh, once again, mm, we use some index. I'm thinking if I need to download anything uh, for that. Uh, okay, let's do this. For Fluent API, what we actually do is we do not alter the uh, code. The code uh, that is not we are going to alter, but we are going to write few things in your uh, this one okay uh, we do uh, we do an fluent api configuration so that your uh, yeah, like basically that you connect you no know, uh, use entity framework to connect your database no the way that you connect you define it okay <clears throat> so basically what you need to do here is I'll show you. On model creating, this is what we need. Okay. Uh, so, one second. Hmm. So basically, so uh, this is this is what we use to write it in your DB context. Uh, uh, so basically, first I will explain this, but you can write few things inside uh, instead of the, this is the basic thing. But uh, first I will explain. See, here the, the model builder. Uh, is the fluent api instance okay model builder is the fluent api instance so 
Override the on model creating method and use a parameter model builder for type model builder to conf uh, configure uh, domain classes. What are the basic, what are the classes, whatever models that you use uh, are the classes. Okay. So let's say, let's write this for a particular uh, model. Once again, I'll write this for a NFT model, how to write this. Mm. Let's write it right for the user masters. Okay. So this you have to write for specific uh, um, class, like basically models or class. So you you make sure how it to work. Okay. Model builder dot uh, entity. So in my entity, that I'm going to use uh, um, user master. So I'm going to define this table. So what I'm going to do is dot property. Okay. So basically uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to define the uh, key. So what is the key here? Let's say I'm saying this is the key in the table. What is the key user ID? Okay. And it can have a has column name, which means uh, I am saying that this has a column name. Okay, I'm doing this. See, I'm giving all the examples only. See, you can use uh, it based on your requirements. See, I'm saying has column name. Next is I'm saying, let's say, uh, let's say it should have a default uh, value. You can define whatever based on whatever you want to have. See, let's say it want it should have a default value of zero means if uh, there is this is identity column. No, so for us it is identical. Let's say if it is not an identity column uh, while inserting there is no data given for this column, it will take it as zero. Okay. okay. For that I am this has default value will be like this, and I am saying is required. I am saying if it is is required means this is mandatory. Uh, this column is mandatory so whenever you want uh, let's say you are running the api means uh, if this data is not given it will throw error okay so it configures the uh, name okay see so basically what you just, do you just understand what uh, we have done it done here you are basically defining the particular model that's all see so you have this model here now what i'm saying is I'm saying that uh, without writing any attributes here, okay. Uh, let's say identity identity and all you can write. You should write it here only. Let's say okay. Uh, without writing anything else, like uh, if you want to do a default, see how to do a default uh, value. If I put this. Okay. Your user ID will take zero as default uh, uh, when uh, it doesn't uh, just it's not given any value. Okay. So ID gets zero. This is default now. So this okay. is another way. That's all. So and that we call it as a fluent API. Uh, basically, you configure it in your DB context so that whenever this particular uh, user master is used, it goes and checks it here. So this is one of the design patterns so that you write it in the DB context itself. So every time that uh, user master is hit, it will go and check, see that okay, it has an uh, a unique column of uh, property. We say unique column of property user ID and user ID is. Uh, the name of the user like whenever you call this particular uh, user master now uh, the column name will be id okay we make it a column name as id and i'm saying default value as zero and all so uh, it's required anytime uh, you're writing it's required okay okay <coughs> okay here yeah. column column name like uh, we have uh, put in sql server right Correct. yes yes same 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 and uh, if we require like multiple column uh, for example user id also is you can write value. you can write it separately also you can write again you can take a model builder dot entity user details and you can okay. start writing oh. got it okay. for which property you want to write property of you you dot address let's say for address 
Oh, sorry, user master. Okay, it means if if we here mention uh, like uh, as default value zero and uh, in that uh, property we have not mentioned any default value, so it will throw the error, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And one more thing, uh, your Fluent API, uh, the model builder has the precedence over your attribute. So this will be taken as a first priority or a priority than your attribute. Okay. So first, basically this, uh, if you are giving uh, something in your attribute uh, and also same in uh, your uh, um, model builder means your model builder code will be taken rather than your attribute okay okay you got it yes yes yeah so uh, this is a fluent api mm. um what else we have to see uh, I have to see one second and checking what else we have to see see uh, this you can write for any table okay but uh, yeah uh, um, this is not going to change anything basically this is not going to make your code better but uh, this is one way that uh, that's available okay it's like uh, defining everything in a single place okay um, rather writing it here writing it in your model but uh, um, I would say that uh, sometimes, like if you want to make a particular column uh, mandatory and all, this is useful. You can do an is required. Okay. Uh, but uh, apart from that, uh, this is going to be an additional code that you need to write it for every column, uh, for every model that you are going to do it in your uh, entity framework. Okay. That is not that much good way, no? Yes. So. That is one thing that uh, you have to see. Um, so that's the thing. Uh, but yeah, um, it's not like a, it's a bad code. Use it when voicing. That's all. Okay. Okay. So now we are going to see what is uh, I enumerable, I list, and all. Okay. So, generally speaking, you should try and uh, use that. Uh, use the least specific type. Okay. See, so, I enumerable is less specific than I list. I list implements I enumerable. That's what I say. So, um, so unless you want something specific from I list, such as count and all, uh, like uh, perhaps add, delete, uh, then I go for uh, I enumerable. See. What is I curve? First, we'll do everything. Let's go to the repository. Okay, when I, first, when I use an I variable. I variable of user uh, master. Uh, okay. This way. Query. DB context dot. User master. Okay. What is the difference between this code and this code? I think. Mm, first one, it return list. Okay. Uh huh. And I query but I don't know. See, uh, I will write one more thing also now. The same thing that I am going to write it in a different way. Okay. Okay. So basically, uh, <clears throat> I'm just uh, I'm just doing the same thing, but in a different way. Like I'm saying, I'm uh, doing I variable and I'm doing an uh, I enumerable code. So 
so if you see here you are not converting anything to an uh, list <clears throat> okay so you are not converting to anything to a list but you are just directly getting the uh, data okay mm-hmm. so what is the difference between these two so first let's start i enumerable exists in system dot collections dot system dot collection actually that's a, that's a generic uh, name space so it's on the system dot collection and i queryable is system dot link basically it, this this i enumerable will convert the result into list i queryable will not convert the result into list instead it is used for querying any anything from a table like let's say you want to query anything from a table you can just directly query okay uh, so you don't need to create a list and all you can directly put a i queryable and do the query you can put var conditions or anything so i queryable is like an uh, container that holds the data okay so i enumerable is suitable for querying data from the in memory collection like list array and so on so when you are doing i enumerable rather than connecting to the database if you already have a list let's say users in this if you want to do anything like dot var and all uh, i i enumerable is best because it's it's a collection no so anything you want to do inside a collection you can use the i enumerable you got it okay Yes. i queryable is basically while querying data from database uh, i en- i enumerable uh, executes select query okay, okay on the server side uh, loads data in memory on the client side and then filters data it's a two double work now so basically while querying data from database i en- this i enumerable will uh, execute select query on the server side okay loads data in memory on the client side and then filters the data what what i'm saying is let's say let's say i queryable directly will go to the database get the data and stores into i queryable but i enumerable will go to the database do a select query get the data do a copy into a local list and when you are doing a var condition here means after taking a copy on the data into a local list on that list only it will do a var condition so it basically it does many things so let's say if you are doing a var condition in a i queryable it directly go it, it, it does the select query with the var condition in the database itself okay, okay. but when you are doing a var condition in i enumerable it selects the data first it, it will not consider your var condition it will only select the data and puts into a list and then on the list only it will uh, do the var condition okay. got it so let's yeah. say if there are 1 lakh data means your i enumerable will bring all the 1 lakh data but you, based on your var condition it should bring only one data means it will bring all 1 lakh data and then on 1 lakh data it will again uh, do an var condition so it's it is time waste actually okay okay so that is with uh, i enumerable by i queryable exists in link queue so i queryable is suitable for querying data from uh, outside memory basically in memory means uh, that is a list and all outside memory means database uh, while i while querying data from database uh, um, it, it does the uh, select and where where and select directly in the uh, uh, database itself okay so that is i queryable and i enumerable any question on these two no so <clears throat> that is the thing uh, yeah, uh, i think we have almost covered many things but we have a few things left uh, so um, what all we have left like eager eager loading uh, and the interme- intermediate mode was deferred mode as we have so those things we'll see tomorrow okay okay not much but uh, yeah tomorrow i'll try to finish uh, the entity framework uh, and we'll try to start with uh, angular so okay angular and uh, typescript are not different languages first of all angular and typescript uh, means uh, <coughs> your uh, javascript and html okay uh, so basically i would say in uh, uh, asp.net how you wrote the code like your uh, aspx will be your html and uh, <clears throat> you have a server side code which will be your uh, c, uh, cs no 
so uh, here uh, angular will be uh, your html code and your server side will have a server side which will be a typescript that's all okay okay uh, your front end always uh, always takes the uh, uh, pattern of your uh, asp.net <clears throat> okay okay so uh, it's not very complex at all so if you have idea on uh, um, asp.net at all you can directly we can can work on it okay so that's we'll uh, do tomorrow uh, anything else any questions no okay mm, then let's see tomorrow okay 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 thank you yeah thank you